Sunshine, blue sky, please go away. Baby's found another and gone away. With a win, my future, my life is filled with gold. So day after day, I stay locked up in my room. I know to you. It might sound strange, but I wish you were right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let it rain. Rain so badly, I want to go outside. But everyone knows. A girl ain't supposed to cry, listen, but I gotta cry, y'all, cause it's a the pain, inside, it hurts when I feel inside, I wish it would rain. Oh, how I wish that it would rain, 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 to wash all the filth away, to wash all the madness away on the planet, if you really want to know the truth. The whole country need a bath. It needs a serious, serious, serious bath. And I mean it. Because I don't think a lot of y'all really realize, um, because we get bags, um, just how uh, much of a dire strait that we in. Because as much as we talk about history repeating itself, a lot of us just don't want to face the fact that um, we are on our way to a time in history that is reminiscent of Reconstruction period. In fact, this is Reconstruction 2. Um, and I say that because how many of y'all have ever really heard graphic stories? Because y'all already know I had to put these on Patreon because YouTube, you, you know, I have to really, really hide it because it don't, it don't, um, it don't care much for these stories. But I got to give it to y'all people because I think it's something that you got to know. And I think it's something that you got to be um, diligent and um, vigilant in how you move, how you move through these parts, how you move through this time and space. OK, so I'm, I'm going to I'm going to read this to y'all and uh, don't get bored because I know y'all get bored easy, especially y'all blunt babies. But. This is an authentic, here is an authentic story of the East St. Louis Massacre as obtained from reliable sources at St. Louis, Missouri. This is a complete story made up from stories told by refugees who fled to St. Louis. Okay. Shot, club, stoned to death, roasted alive amid the ruins of their homes. While blood mad riflemen stood outside and sent leaden missiles to death at each one who ventured to seek uncertain safety of the open, um, at least 38 and probably more Negroes were killed by rioters in East St. Louis, Illinois on Monday night. The riots continued all day uh, Monday followed by the slaying of a white detective sergeant by Negroes late Sunday night. It was not halted until the mobs exhausted themselves in a terrible work early Tuesday morning when sufficient numbers of solidarity from the Illinois State Military were on the ground. Now, I'm giving you this from the newspaper. Even with the soldiers patrolling the town, many acts of lawlessness Continue Tuesday. And you try to tell me, don't some of this sound like today? 
Property damage that aggregated at home 600,000 was done in destruction by fires of almost 100 homes of Negroes and industrial property to which the flames con communicated after the rioters um, applied the torch to the residences in various portions of the city. It was a bloody, lustful turmoil of maddened citizens who had forgotten their citizenry and laughed at police, laughed at law, and even made jokes of armed militiamen until martial law was declared and the soldiers were prepared to shoot in return at the lawbreakers, who were all white, by the way. And so I'm, I'm sure you know that by now. They took their time after enough damage was done. They decided they'll go ahead now and come in um, and get the lawbreakers. They surged madly through the streets from daylight until nightfall. Men, women, and children participated in the hunt for Negroes' lives, a hunt that took on greater proportions perhaps than any similar one that would have been carried on in the United States since the days of the Ku Klux Klan. The crowd lashed itself into greater furies as hours wore on. Probably some of the success of the military in bringing about family and semblance of the order was due to the fact that the rioters had exhausted themselves and sat it in measure their lust for blood. Content content with uh with first content at first with administering severe beatings to the Negroes they met, soon they began to demand greater punishment for their victims. Then they began to kill them, and then to add to unmeasurable tortures as a preference to the killing. And women urged on the men, even took part in the acts. It was reported one woman wanted to cut out the heart of a Negro man. Uh, a man already paralyzed from a bullet wound who was then being maltreated at the hands of a mob. Women and children, it is stated, pursued the woman who was driven out of burning homes with the idea of not extinguishing their burning clothing, but of inflicting added pain if possible. The stood, they stood around the open, the women, laughing and jeering while they witnessed the final writhing of the terror and pain that wrecked wretches who crawled into the streets to die after their flesh had been cooked in, in their own homes. Then after uh, resting during the period of the late evening, torchbearers began their nefarious work early Tuesday morning and fired the Negro district in the south end of the city, known as Reynolds Row, lighting the sky in the red of blood. It was visible for miles. Damn. The fire in the Reynolds Road burned, its out its, burned itself out at 3 o'clock Wednesday morning. Most of the Negro residents in the district had fled their homes before the fire started. The bodies of Negroes lay where they murdered in the streets or in the alleys or in targets of gibbers from passing mobs. As the night wore on, the streets became deserted. Soldiers were fixed with bayonets, and they stood guard over the dead. Thirteen companies of Illinois State Troopers under command of uh, uh, General Frank Dickerson controlled East St. Louis as late hour as Monday night, after six additional companies had hurried from Springfield on urgent pleas from Mayor Mulvin. The rioting, a sequel of an outbreak May 28th in resentment of the alleged colonization of Southern Negroes in East St. Louis, soon turned into a general slaughter for blacks. 
neither the age, the woman, nor children were spared by the mob. Because y'all need to hear this. You really need to understand what time we're living in and what these people are capable of doing to us, if you don't already know. Most of y'all got enough sense to know that we at this time again. The rioting began long before daylight Monday, when more than 400 Negroes gathered in a Negro district following the ringing of a church bell. The leaders claimed that they assembled server for the purpose of protection, and most of them were armed. It is said that they started marching towards the business section. In the meantime, word of the gathering had been transmitted to the East St. Louis Police Headquarters, and Chief Hickey ordered Detective Sergeant Copeland and three other detectives to disperse the gathering. Coppolis drug drove in an automobile to the Negro Quarter where they were fired upon and Coppage was killed. Three detectives was wounded. Later in the morning, crowds began gathering on the downtown streets as two companies of militiamen arrived at 930. Pedestrians hurried to join one another in the crowds that congregated, listening to the haranguing of agitators. Then the spark was dropped that sent the mobs into violence. At Broadway and Collinsville Avenue, one of the busiest corners in an important streetcar transfer point, a Negro walked quietly along the street and a white man stepped out and knocked him down. Instantly there was a riot. A knot of eager spirits gathered and some of them beat and kicked Negro. A white man drew a revolver and calmly fired five shots in the body and the pro prostrate black into the body of the prostrate black. Two were effective, one in the arm and the other in the leg. The mob threw the Negro dead and turned to the other activities. The Negro rose and ran. Shooting now became general. A white man stood in front of the uh, Illinois Hotel, Ilmo Hotel, doing a little shooting on his own account. He took aim at a Negro, missed, and then striking a white man. Lewis had 65 years old a bystander in the groin. The man with the revolver was arrested and instantly a mob turned on the police and, and, and compelled his release. But later in the day, the same man was found inciting another street crowd to violence. And this time he was locked up. Until this time, there had been no disposition on the part of mobs to interfere with Negro women. But now white women and girls were clamoring aboard streetcars where they knocked down Negro women, tore off their clothes, dragged them into the street, and sent them screaming towards their homes. The white men lent a vigorous hand in this. At 1.30, uh, PM and Edwardsville care was stopped. The trolley having been jerked from the wire, men and women and girls leaped aboard and began to scramble for Negro passengers. Several Negro women were dragged to the pavement where they were clubbed and kicked. Out of this car, a Negro man was dragged and he was struck. And as he struck the pavement, his body became a uh, veritable kettle drum for kicks and tattoos of clubs played upon him. He died on the way to the hospital. While this bedlam was at its height, the Belleville care arrived. The trolley was pulled down. Women and girls went aboard, shrieking. They dragged out a number of pleading negresses who were belabored with clubs and was kicked out of the way. According to the police, there was no attempt 
made to question the victims or determine if they had any part to do with this uprising, the mourning, or had been inciting, or had been inciting trouble. Down at the next corner, a howl burst from another mob. A Negro was caught and beaten. He was shot through the head, and a policeman called an ambulance and placed the Negro in it. And the white crowd yelled. Guardsmen by this time were occupying posts at several important corners. Some were stationed at the corner just described, but none offered resistance. A short distance away, another car was stopped and a Negro jerked out. A bludgeon crushed his skull and he died in the ambulance. Some of the rioters drew bold. One of them went casually up to a soldier. Let me see that gun, boy, he said, taking the rifle. You're liable to hit someone. And he walked away with it. This incident was repeated in 15 or 16 other incidents. Pistols popped all at all corners. The police tried to capture those with firearms, but no sooner turned their backs on they turned their backs on one sniper. Then another behind him began popping away. Straight bullets struck several bystanders. William Keeser, the proprietor of a hardware store, was standing in front of his place of business. A bullet struck him in the breast, passing through his shirt. One of the ambiguous undertaker's ambulances was on hand. Chrysler died on the way to the hospital. Guardsmen were now walking on regularly established patrols. Still, the shooting and yelling and fighting continued. Fred Thayer, a white man, was sitting at a second-story window watching the proceedings when a stray bullet struck him in the shoulder. A Negro went to relate to the relay depot to take a train back to the south. A mob caught him gave him a drum and shot him dead while his train pulled out. Mayor Maulman and the officers of the state or regiments held a conference of war. It was determined to rush the Negroes out of the city. Uh, centuries had been th thrown about both the East St. Louis and the St. Louis entrances of the East and the free bridges to prevent the passage of persons with arms. The basket full of revolvers and other arms were taken away from the Negroes by the white men, seeking to either flee to St. Louis or to come to the Missouri City to participate. But even while the cause of the trouble, the influx of Southern Negroes was being removed, the mobs increased in vigor in their attacks of the earlier day. While the police had been active in taking arms away from the rioters, there arose a demand for more. The pawn shop of M. Elman was torn to bits in search for weapons. Many revolvers, rifles, and knives were taken and the mob reassured, reassured went howling back down the streets looking for more victims. Presently, the work of the mob turned from belligerent Negroes to any members of the race that you saw along the way. An old Negro hobbling along the stick appeared near a group of rioters. I don't guess that that old bird knows that he what's going on here, said a man. I'll go over and tell him. He hailed the ancient Negro who paused, and a group of white men then soon gathered and Soon the old man was left lying in the street, beaten to death. By this time, more militia companies were beginning to arrive before nightfall. 600 soldiers, uh, 
uh, 600 soldiers embracing companies of Vandela G of Effenberg, of Newton F of Benton and Shelbyville and E. Carbondale were thrown in various danger zones. Later in the evening, General Frank Dickerson ordered out six more companies and proceeded to East St. Louis to take charge. These additional troops were ordered out. L of L of Olney, A of Casey, G of Sullivan, and D of Paris of the 4th Infantry, and companies F M Pontiac and L of Kankakee, Illinois. It was at 7 o'clock that all streetcar service um, as suspended, though it had been practically in Bayonese since the early morning. The interest of the St. Louis bridges saw the passage of many automotive truckloads and Negroes eager to find safety in Missouri City. Policemen and soldiers marched by the sides of the trucks and fought off the mobs that remained at a distance and filled the air with missiles. Downtown streets were tore up in the effort of the riders to obtain ammunition, cobblestones being deemed admirable for this purpose. But as the evening drew on the interest in the downtown operations, it seemed to lag, and the mobs, led by shouts of self-appointed leaders, start yelling off and shooting for the Negro quarters. Let's burn them out, rose on in the air. And the suggestion was received with great favor. Little resistance was met in the line of the soldiers about the Negro quarter. The mob stormed past shortly after 7 p.m. More than 20 houses of black people, workmen Negro, had been fired in flame past the weird glare over the scene. Let me, I'm going to stop this right now and give you a part two.